Give it up! Tank and the Bangers! I'm telling you, I feel big. I smell strong. For I am like a giant in the body of a lion. I am at the peak of my brilliance. I can feel the indecision in the wind swaying backwards and swaying forwards. It's thinking about knocking someone like me over. But I ain't never seen no breeze knock no mountain over. I'm telling you, I feel big. Ever since I was 12 years old, there's been a tricycle riding up and down my spine with a busted brake and a crooked wheel. I need a realignment in my back so my soul can heal. And most days I feel like oil. Like a blessing with a leak I want to spill everywhere. I want to leave a piece of God in your back seat. I want to ride the back of the devil until he buckles in his knees. And most days I can't believe my legs because I didn't think that they would last me this long. I didn't think that my arms could reach this high or that my eyes could open this wide. I feel, I feel like vision, so I must be witnessing God. I say you copying off my warm ups. My name is actually Tariana, and so as I got older, I was like, I want to be called. Ariana now. You are the 2016 Big Easy nominee for Best R&B Act, My Spilled Milk nominee for Mover of the Year. You have been featured in Offbeat Magazine, and people love you in the States, they love you in New Orleans, they love you in the UK. And Tank, who are you? You're a poet. You're a poet turned songstress. I am, I am. Uh, I always wrote poetry better than I could sing. When I was a little girl, I used to sing a lot, but I wrote more than I, than I sang. Uh, one of my mentors, Asia Rainey, she said, you should use the music to get you there and let the poetry accompany you, because they'll receive the music more. I cook your clothes, I wash your dinner, then I dress like a pinup. I do tricks, smoking on no stick, just to stay with you, grab my car, and I'm gonna get you back it up and I'm gonna hide your box and steal your clothes, freaking naked on the floor. That was a light bulb for me. I, I never thought about it in that way. I'm happy that she she gave that to me. You know, I remember my first poem. I was like, by Adrian. I was like, I'm a serious child. I am a serious child with serious goals. And if it takes hard work to reach my goals, I will do it. Like, that was my poem. About how old were you at this um, point? Probably, uh, maybe 11. Okay. Yeah, 11 probably. Because I started writing my own poems more at 12. I had a poetry book and I just said, it was like, name, age, best friend, what hand you write with, <laughs> how old are you, you know, what's your favorite color. I would have that on the front of all my poetry notebooks. Do you still keep a poetry notebook? Oh yeah, you got to, you got to. 
I got a new journal for Christmas. Um, I don't care that it has a Taylor Swift on it. I considered that it had Taylor Swift on it before I got it. But I'm so weird that the paper lines have to be dark so I can be inspired to write on it. And I opened it up and it was really good paper. Taylor Swift official spiral notebook. <laughs> and it was $2. Ready? You'll be feeding off of a stage's presentation. Hungry. For the who's the dams and the standing ovation. It was also finding people with like minds. Um, I was introduced to Pass It On and Slam New Orleans, and that was amazing for me. Though you reside in my conscience, I still made a promise to love, if you know what I mean. Crown you with a tiara, let you perish your queen, though we could never be together. Still, I cherish the dream. She had me singing. We don't all over the world meeting all these other children from Philly and New York and London uh, I knew that I wasn't the only one and that was one of the most monumental parts in my life uh, in my shaping as an artist and as a person the year that I began to truly infuse my music with my poetry was 2010. That was the year that I released my first album, Random Me. Everybody said, when are you gonna come out with an album, Tank? And well, I knew at that time I didn't have a band, so I had to make this music myself. Everything was, you know, it was all that, you know? It was really special. I, I never expected it to go far. I just wanted to listen to myself while I cleaned up my room. And before I knew it, everybody wanted a copy of that. Do you think that's what led you to start a band, Tank and the Bangers, because you come from that community and family spirit? Well, let me. T I, uh, well, let me. Uh, after I be, after I stopped slamming in competitions, I just put it into the atmosphere that I wanted a band because I have all these these little songs in my head. I would love someone to, you know, accompany it. And as soon as I put that out there, little by little, certain people begin to um, to just become a part of my um, inner circle. I'm currently the bass player. My name is Norman. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I met Jack Spratt, a rapper on the West Bank, and um, he introduced me to Tanya Boy Cannon. Tanya Boy Cannon went to an open mic at Black Star, and I met Tank. My name is Tavia Asby. I met Tank at an open mic called Pass It On in 2010 and she finally had quit her job and I sent her a quote that day about following your fate. She was like, I quit my job. You wanna go to the movies? Like from that day on, we've been rolling thick as thieves ever since. Right now, I do just about everything from booking a show to doing hair. Um, <laughs> I love them, so I give a lot of myself to them. My name is Joshua Johnson. Um, I play drums and I'm from the West Bank. I'm Merle Burkett and I play keyboards, that's my instrument. And I'm from the New Orleans East, that's where I grew up. I actually met Tank at a Nina Simone tribute, and Tavi was like, you mind rocking with us? And I was like, sure. And ever since then, <laughs> I've been playing with Tank and the Bangers. My name is Angelica Joseph, but everybody around here calls me Jelly. I, I love that nickname. It, it kind of defines who I am at this point, you know. I am going to kill this audition. <laughs> the scars of your love remind me of 
I think that my experience on Idol gave me that extra push to always give 110% on stage. You gotta always deliver, you know what I mean? So however you're feeling, you gotta take that and somehow infuse that with, you know, I'm about to go out here and kick the stage's ass. Because that's what you gotta do, you know what I mean? You gotta make people feel something when you're up there. And that's, what is, that's what's really important for me. I, I, I pride myself on Allowing Why people to feel exactly what I feel through song. Mm. To the beat. <laughs> yeah, as much as we'd like to hear you sing again, I don't think Why? we need to. Come on, Jelly. See you in Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Oh Fantastic job, Thank baby. You so much. One, two, it's the time for free. Cause I can feel it. Cause I can feel it. Let's end the song. That's it. One more time right here. Hey. I like one more time right here. My name is Albert Allenbeck. I play saxophone, sometimes the flute. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. My church was looking for a sax. Albert came along. I was like, okay, cool, man. This guy's really good. Hey, man, check out my band. Come to rehearse or something like that. I forget. He'll probably tell you how it is. I played at his church, played saxophone at his church, and then they needed a saxophone player. First show I played with them was in 2014 at Tipitina's. And I asked Ty, I remember I said to Ty, like in the green room at Tips, I was like, take me with you. And I was, I was like, and, and, and she, I don't know what, I don't remember what she said, but she took me with her. I think I'm like a hype man, but in like a goofy way. I have trouble doing stuff super seriously and don't force it, because then it's corny. Of course, people say I look corny anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's forced or not. I think I started playing saxophone in sixth grade. I think, honestly, I picked saxophone because my dad liked how cool the saxophone player in Sade's Smooth Operator video looked. I think that was it. The roots are a huge influence. Kanye West. Kendrick Lamar. I just love people that put that gift straight in the front. The great Miss Shaka Khan, of course Whitney Houston, Gladys Knight, and Patti LaBelle. Gospel artists like Kim Burrell. Everything neo soul, everything hip hop, soul stuff. I loved Sonny Patterson, and I just wanted to go all over the world with the notebook because I thought that's what she did. She said water ran up the street, asked if I had ever seen something you normally only hear about. I listened to a lot of Jay Z. I got more into jazz once I started going to Noka. I started listening to like Miles Davis, Coltrane. Started listening to a lot of uh, R and B and Erykah Badu. Around 8, 9, 10, I started hearing Earth, Wind & Fire and uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, outside of that, well, I would watch a lot of Disney stuff. So I watched The Lion King and Little Mermaid and like cartoons. I and I would listen to that stuff. And I'd be like, that's kind of dope. Also, a lot of church music because I also was playing at yeah, church. <laughs> religious music is like more of playing with feeling. Um, you do the same thing when you play in a secular world, like, but you're also worried about what I'm sounding like, how they're gonna perceive me, uh, am I playing the right notes? And church is more relaxed because it's, everything's just coming from the heart and people respect that. church music, it was like a bass, and then I listened to jazz, and I was like, yeah, it's like church, but it's this. And now I listen to rap, and I'm like, it's like church, but it's this. And I, everything for me at one point, it derived from outside of church for me. Being around so many pastors, I grew up, my grandfather a pastor, my aunt a pastor, his brother a pastor, my uncle a pastor, it's a family of pastors, it's a family of people that get on the pulpit and just are really expressive. So that just came naturally to me to want to affect people in, in such a way that it steers something in them. On Sunday morning, grandma's hands play the tambourine so well. 
Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She said, Tank, don't you run so fast. So what you would do is you play that. Alright, so go to a, a D flat concert. So you'll go. Then you come back later. Yeah, you come back. Okay, alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do track one, two. Mm. So try that. Oh, there's some trombone notes. Uh, they got a, right, right, right. But also here. That low note is kind of out of tune down. Yeah, I don't want to do too many takes. I really don't. Don't do think it. of it that way, though. Don't think uh, of it as uh, don't think of it as I have to do so many takes. Think of it as I, it has to be good and it has to be right. That's it. I don't care how many takes I gotta do. I don't know. Yeah, but it gotta be right, though. You, you know that. Hello. Hello. Down by the river where the green grass grows and the sun be burning hot. Check your penny holes, don't nobody know where you go. Just know that the block just got hot. When you see a trick, gotta be slick, gotta be quick, gotta get it before you get cut. And ain't no telling what I'm gonna do tonight. I see you looking right away. You like my body, don't see my face. Hang with them girls, gotta pay to play. They lost the way, they lost the way. Hang with them girls, they lost their way. That that lost their way, right? That lost their way. Like that? Yeah, that lost their way. Say the words. That lost their way. Yeah. Hang with them girls, that lost their way. That's the word you gonna say. They are T H E I. They are. Okay, I'm ready, dude. I'm ready. I'm sorry. I see you looking right away. You're trying to get me, but I don't plan to stay. Hang with them girls, they lost their way. Oh, yeah? All right, thank you, cool. Okay. One, two, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Elba like it too. Elba like it too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Can I hear that one? That's it, boo. I think what allows me to be such a free person is because I've come from such a forgiving world. To come from a world of a, a church family and to go into the poetry world, those people are so kind. They're they're very open to you um, expressing anything you went through in life. And just, so for me, coming from that type of world, it, it's just been always in me to share. That was a cool one, I like that. I'm, I'm happy to be from New Orleans, it's the land of festivals. And what I've learned is that they're very welcoming. I can never be someone that says, my city doesn't honor me, my city doesn't love me. No, I had to move away to get on it. I, I'm never gonna be able to say that. I feel love here, especially from OZ. You know, they've been the most kindest. And I feel appreciated and I appreciate them in return. I know who gave us our first foot in the door. All right, yes, indeed. The time is 4.32, and you got to tune to WWOZ 90.7 FM in New Orleans. Well, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome to the OZU Airwaves, Tank and the Bangas. How y'all doing? <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys just came off a big tour of England, is that right? Yes, we did. You were over there for a little while, huh? We were over there for three months. Whoa, that is more than a little while. That's what's so cool, <laughs> just to even wow. just to be among us, so many different areas of London, but also to experience chilling right in the backyard with mm -hmm. um, like the true artists of the city, you know? Fantastic. Now, speaking of backyards, you guys have been doing a thing in your own backyard for a little while, right? Right across yes. the canal. Across yeah. The canal. Tell us about those backyard concerts. <laughs> A lot of fun, bring a lot of 
band fans and friends out and uh, you know feature artists sometimes and it's cool. And, and you guys are often the performer but not always the only one obviously right? It's always opening up to different people. Okay. It's so cool because it's just like you go in the neighborhood and you just end up in this backyard full of lights and my auntie, um, they, my family been staying there for years now and she makes it so beautiful and it's our rehearsal space as well. So just the fact that we open it up to our fans and other artists. So it's become something to look forward to for not just ourselves. <laughs> Ooh, New Orleans, I'm about to bring to you one of the most special new bands making it in New Orleans. And one of the most special things about being in a place like this and hearing things like this, you should know that there is nowhere in the world that is listening to what you're listening to, experiencing what you're experiencing. I'm the kind of thing your kitchen hygienizes and breaks your dishes, feeling really it fulfilling us, gonna make you think of. I feel like when I'm on stage, I bring the energy of a New Orleans performer. The, a lot of them are so eccentric, and and their clothes are always vibrant, and they're always in costume. New Orleans, somebody need to squeeze! Uh, uh, uh. Song, I heard the voice on the phone from your tone. Now the phone keep ringing in my head like a metronome. I figure as the music grows bigger, as the stages gets bigger, she can do things that she never thought she'd be able to do. I'm actually excited to see how big the stage show of Tank and the Bangers get, because Tank's imagination is really wild. <laughs> Type of show I want is an energetic show for great focus. So sometimes, sometimes when you meet a lot of people, especially at one time, it can all just become a blur. That you're walking, but you gotta do it by yourself. It's the rhythm of life. Um, sometimes a fan wants to just hold you in their space for as long as they can. And sometimes they don't even say anything. They're just looking at you like this. Waiting for you to say something brilliant. <laughs> but the, the way I stay um, the grounded in it is when I meet someone who I truly admire and what type of response what I want from them. It's a conscious thing. Because after the show, you're tired and your eyebrow coming off. Oh, you sweating? You some people do this. Hey, thanks, Snapchat girl, come on. And I'll be like, wait, wait. My hair falling. My hair falling down. We have created a family dynamic. I think that's the special thing about the group, and it is shown on stage. Y'all don't mind if I say hey to my mom, huh? That was a big shout out. That was a big shout out. If you had a good time tonight and if you feel free, I want you guys to um clap your hands oh. like inside of my heart. See, I knew he had a piece missing. And hazardous things that I could swallow, like um my pride. But he was on sale. And he was stunning. Now, as I strolled through the walkway at Walmart, I could hear pieces of his honesty just drop on the floor. But I kept on walking. And I think I overheard his voice talking to another girl. Dang, girl. So I guess we not communicate. Often wonder how the 
same man that made me feel like I was invincible. Could walk past a girl like me and all my black girl magic and treat me like I was invisible. I was so vulnerable in his hour four, willing to buy his daddy's merchandise just to claim that he was mine and mine alone. But you are broken and you are beautiful. But I've learned over the years that self-reflection should never be confused with who is looking at you. These, these guys are my brothers. She's my sister. Um, first we fight, we laugh, we cry. That's just kind of who we are as, as a people and as friends and as business partners. Every day I get on my knees and I just, I just thank God, you know? Because I kept my receipt. I feel like we're putting out love on stage and off stage. And that's what this is all about. I'm excited about the music we're working on now. It's really sounding good. I'm definitely bigger and better. I just want to communicate that I really appreciate the energy from the, from the audience. Just let everybody in the audience know that we love them just for listening to us. I do this more to like prove to everybody that dreams can be reached. And I'm glad that I found like people that, that I can share this dream with. Like everybody in their own like way in this circle. It's like sharing the same dream, like it's they're on the same journey with me and it's crazy how it all just come together. Yeah, I just want everybody to know that like you can like achieve your goals or whatever you do, just put that positive spirit up there in the atmosphere or whatever and it will come to you. God is truly giving me a moment in my life that I have nothing to do but create. My mom don't trip on me. I have the most amazing positive team around me. And he's literally doing this. Just create, create, take, create. We're all at our prime right now. And it's just, it's great to be in New Orleans right now. We're doing big things. And I'm just kind of great to, I'm, I'm just happy to be in the midst of it. Right now, everybody, you guys are next. That's all they tell me, you're next. Oh, I see big things. And the hardest thing right now for my life is trying to really accept that, that we are next or that that actually is happening. Because right now, it's like, we're just doing our thing. We're trying to live off of it. The winning video is by a group called Tank and the Bangas. Ooh, I like that. The group Tank and the Bangas are from New Orleans. This is awesome.
We are live in New Orleans with Miss Tank of Tank and the Bangers. How you doing, girl? I'm doing very well. <laughs> I'm just really feeling the New Orleans uh, <laughs> spirit in the air right now. Oh, yeah, we're laughing because somebody's practicing outside. <laughs> just practicing on their snare drum, but that's that's the beauty, right? It is the beauty. That's so. what I love about it. So, you know, I want to talk to you. Um, this is Tank. I am. Taroni. Ooh, Tariana. Tariana. Oh, my God, I'm getting you and Tavia. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Tariana Tank. Boy. My name is actually Tariana. And um, I asked my mom, I have, a, I have a friend in my life that um, calls me Tariana. And I just be like, that's not how my name is spelled. He said, but that's how it's like spelled, even though it's not how it's pronounced. And so as I got older, I was like, I want to be called Tariana now. I like Tariana. I'm Tariana. It's very sophisticated. <laughs> I know, it's just like, uh. Tank, who are you? You're a poet. You're mm -hmm. a poet turned songstress. I am. I am. Uh, I always wrote poetry better than I could sing. So I was like, I'm going to focus more on writing because my sisters are the singers and I'm just not so amazing at that. And um, so I just wrote, I wrote a lot. I, my sister had a poetry notebook. I memorized all her poems. And uh, before I knew it, my, my, my cousin gave me a poem called A Great Somebody by Adrian Hardesty. We recited it in my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. And I, I just had to keep picking up the paper, even though I was uh, practicing all night. But once it came for that time, I was afraid. But my, um, my grandmother, after that, she saw something in me, started bringing me to all the churches to perform before my grandfather would speak. And uh, yeah, so it just stuck with me. Too. Did you have stage fright Begin no, when you first started? I didn't. Okay. I didn't. You just had your grandmother's support. Yeah, and church. You know, I've, I've come from... Uh, I think what allows me to be such a free person is because I've come from such a forgiving world. To come from a world of a, a church family and to go into the poetry world, those people are so kind. They're, they're very open to you um, expressing anything you went through in life and just be there to hug you right afterwards, you know. So for me, coming from that type of world, it, it's just been always in me to share. Do you think that's what led you to start a band, Tank and the Bangers, because you come from that community and family spirit? Well, let me. T I, uh, well, let me. Uh, after I be, after I stopped slamming in competitions, I just put it into the atmosphere that I wanted a band because I have all these these little songs in my head. I would love someone to you know accompany it. And as soon as I put that out there, little by little, certain people begin to um, to just become a part of my um, inner circle. Can I get a little more specific? How did you put it out there? How so I, as a, there? I feel like it's a spiritual element, but also is it a physical it's, element too? It's a physical and a spiritual element, but first spiritual first, you know, first spiritual, um, at least to me. And uh, so I put it out there, man, I want a band, I want a band. Then I started going to this uh, open mic called Liberation Lounge every Sunday. And they just had these people there. The, the interesting thing is though, I went to one of my brother's show, Nate Suave, and he had a drummer playing for him, and he had a, a bass player playing for him, and a guitarist, and I thought they was really killing. And I was like, man, I would like to hire them for a show, for my first show. And after that, it just became like that. Then they were at the open mic that I used to go to every Sunday, so, and everybody used to get on and off the mic and get on and off the instruments, children, teenagers, and before you knew it, we was on the road all together. But at first, it was the Liberated Soul Collective. It was. It was, it was like a Philly thing. We were very inspired by what the people in Philly was doing. You know, the roots, jail, get all together, mm -hmm. put your dreams in one basket, take it somewhere. And that's what we did. We got a, everybody was put a dollar in a bucket every week, $2. Before you know, we really rented like this big RV. We just traveled all over with it. Mm -hmm. That was expensive. <laughs> Never do that again. I would love to do that again, actually, <laughs> but just like not on my budget, <laughs> not on our budget. Well, the way things are going, I don't think you'll be doing that on oh, your that budget anymore. That good. That sounds good. <laughs> Who uh, are your favorite early poets? Oh my or poems? God, Sonny Listen. Patterson. Oh my God, uh, Asia Rainey. Um, who else? My best friend, Tyron, you know, uh, and some of my favorite poets uh, were some of the Brave New Voices poets when I was a part of that with HBO. That's um, Joshua Bennett and uh, B. Young and Jacqueline Wang. Um, it was just amazing to, to travel and be among teenagers just like myself that were weird or more weird than I was at the time. Expressive, just beautiful groups all the way from, they were from everywhere, you know, like nobody brought it like the teenagers. How did you get to be a part of that? Uh, I went to a, a poetry slam at Edna Carr 
a high school, my teacher, I, I did a poetry slam at my high school one day, and I was so nervous to do this slam because I had this rhyming word that said Gucci and coochie. And I was just so nervous to say it because after I did I won a slam, but I was like, oh, that's the Gucci coochie girl, the Gucci coochie. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And I didn't want to do it, but I'm like, I got to do this poem. I have these words in me. I have to express myself. And um, my teacher ended up giving me an album with a bunch of youth poets like myself on it. I listened to that album every day, every day. And when it was time for me to go to their school, as soon as they got on the mic, I knew them just by their voices. And they're still my friends today. Mm -hmm. And after that, we were at PJ's Coffee every week, writing, getting prepared to go to Brave New Voices. And and I, um, I actually was in a competition to go and I wasn't able to because I had a time penalty, which is something horrible and slam. Poetry. What exactly is the time penalty? A time penalty is when they give you about three minutes and ten seconds to do your poem. But if you go over that time, then you're deducted points. And I was deducted points and I couldn't slam it. Hurt everything inside of me. I, I, I stopped writing for a while because um, I was afraid all my poems were too long. So, um, But after the storm happened and we moved to Indiana, uh, a young man I was slamming with in New Orleans by the name of Akeem, he called me and he was like, I think you should come and slam. I was like, I don't know, I'm dusty, I'm rusty. I How long been after uh, Katrina was that? Um, that was maybe two years, two years, and I, it was on our way, but it was perfect timing because I was leaving Indiana, coming to New Orleans, and we got together, Team Snow, and it just changed everything. That's the adult slam team. Yeah. In what way did it change everything? What's, what new started to happen? Man. How did you feel as a poet? It's, uh, Post Katrina, it's the reason. I mean, I had Lord, I haven't had so much happen in my life. It's hard to even try to. I could put it in segments like this, but Lord, it could get a little jumbled up, which it just did. <laughs> it just got really jumbled <laughs> up because I went from the youth and I hurry up and went straight to the uh, okay. to the adults. But um, they changed my life because they they were very welcoming to the gift that I had to bring to the circle. It's like, they were a group before I came, but once I got in that group, everything really just became full circle. Like it was meant. We literally met in front of an abandoned house, and we were just in a cypher, you know, just spitting, just humming and things, and everything. And somebody even came by this and started recording. It's still on the internet to this day with like, probably over 20,000 views, right. just this one cypher. The first day we met, like, it was just amazing. Just, it didn't, it didn't just to be in front of, an abandoned house. It was like everything, just like a phoenix rising from ashes. Like it was, it was an incredible moment. And those people are, um, were some of the most influential people in my life. Catalyst. He was so strong. He performed so positive. I mean, so dynamic and strong and kind. Icon was so witty with her words, and she didn't never used to have to scream. She just had a voice that carried so well. And Akeem, he just encouraged everyone and wrote with everyone and, you know, got you out of your, any ego that you had on you. Like, you could write with anyone and make something brilliant. And Quest, he was just so verbose, it was verbose, whatever. I, I always have a problem pronouncing that word. <laughs> I, just, I, I can spell it, though. <laughs> but that's what he was. <laughs> that's what he was. And um, so he just, everyone just had something that made you um, stronger than what you were before when you, once you got into the group with them. And um, so I just knew that this was the perfect team. I always wanted to be a winning team. Like even going to Brave New Voices and seeing New York teams and Philly teams and they were just so dope. They were so polished. They, they looked like they were so passionate about it. I'm like, I want a winning team. I want to look like a team that really puts in work. And, and even just saying that, um, being with that adult team, Team Snow, like we won almost everything. Like we worked hard and we felt like we deserved everything we won. And, and when we didn't, we was like, let's go back to the drawing board. Do you still write with these poets? You still work with them to this day? I don't write with them, but I work with them. In like, what way? What capacity? I'll see them tonight. You know, we're going to do an all women's uh, poetry situation tonight to make sure that they can continue on going to nationals. What's your, what's your technique in the beginning? In the beginning, I was a little girl that used to love to write about things that didn't happen to me, but were serious. I used to, I used to like to write about women that were... Um, that were in hard situations with men, girls, little girls that were um, that were molested. I always wanted to be a voice for some, you know, for someone that really couldn't speak out against things. I used to see things and write about it, but never used to write anything 
personal. And I always had um, being around so many pastors. I grew up, my grandfather a pastor, my aunt a pastor, his brother a pastor, my uncle a pastor. It's a family of pastors. It's a family of people that get on the pulpit and just are really expressive. So that just came naturally to me to want to affect people in, in such a way that it steers something in them. So even young, you know, I remember my first poem, I was like, by Adrian, I was like, I'm a serious child. I am a serious child with serious goals. And if it takes hard work to reach my goals, I will do it. You know, I just was, <laughs> I am a clean somebody. I know if I lie down with hogs, I will come up with mud. So I know to keep my mind, my body, and my character clean. Like, that was my poem. About how old were you at this point? Um, probably, uh, maybe 11. Okay. Yeah, 11 probably. Because I started writing my own poems more at 12. I had a poetry book and I just said, it would say, name, age, best friend, what hand you write with. <laughs> How old are you? You know, what's your favorite color? I would have that on the front of all my poetry notebooks. Do you still keep a poetry notebook? Oh yeah, you got to, you got to. Do you travel with one? Mm-hmm, I do. Cause, but mostly these days, it'll have more music in it and the poems will be very, just not finished. I just write down some thoughts. You know, I'm just really in tune with, um, with how I feel about things, you know, especially uh, love and things is, is, is like new for me. It's new, especially experiencing them as a, uh, you know, like in my mid, late twenties, you know, like it's just like, it's new to me because I didn't experience it in high school or anything. So the feelings are just so brand new to me that I'm, that I'm just writing about it, you know. How did you meet PJ Morton? How did I meet PJ Martin? The first time I met PJ Martin was actually at French Quarter Fest. Our first French Quarter Fest, uh, I knew I knew, I love when I have a, a vision in mind, cause if I don't, I'm like, dang. I knew I wanted to have a huge fro and a long skirt. I just knew that if you, I'm new to it, and I always have big hair, and I knew that if you was gonna be walking past it, you're gonna be like, who is that with that big hair? <laughs> so I knew that it was going to uh, capture some attention of people that didn't know who we were. And, uh, and, after I, and I knew, and PJ came on a different stage right after us, and I went up to him and told him how much I you know, loved him and stuff, and I took a picture with him. I would never think that like, uh, years later, you know, he would be in my rehearsal space at our backyard hangout, you know, eating the oyster, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm just such a huge fan of him. Like, when I'm, I'm in his presence, I just, I feel like a little girl. Yeah, I wanted to ask, like, about mm -hmm. uh, the, the music, like, a lot of it's really complex and, and the time changes and, and mm. how, where it, your music came from, come from the, the, the approach to music and the style. Yeah. Some of them are really <laughs> simple, like amazingly simple. Like, I you know, love and those. Are, that's the favorite ones. It's probably my favorite ones. Who does the arrangements for Josh, the Joshua? Joshua does all mm -hmm. the complicated arrangements. Yeah, because he's complicated. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so he likes to be on this roller coaster. Yeah. Okay. See, um, uh, I'm I'm really happy that we got Joshua because Joshua was a. Uh, one of my best friends, Tavia, who manages us now, she was a, um, he was her friend. They used to get their hair done, and now Tavia mom does my hair. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be slick, you know, and um, she did their hair, and uh, one day Tavia said that she was in the car with him, he, his, his brothers are, you know, really great musicians, and then she just let him hear my, um, hear my music, and um, he was just supposed to come by, help just write some songs, you know, write out the, the music to the song, so you know, if I go to anywhere, anybody could play it for me. Mm -hmm. And he just came, and he never left. Wow. Yeah, he never left. That's awesome. Yeah, I think so. I was like, Tommy's like, I don't know if we could get them. Them is, you know, expensive boys. You know, we just starting out. But I'm like, but I want them. No, I want them to play with us, and I'm gonna put it out there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get what I, what I desire. Okay. And that's that tools. church right there. That's that church. <laughs> but the crazy part is it's have church, have science. Because um, if you ever saw this documentary called The Secret, it's basically talking about just speaking things out there into the atmosphere, believing in it, writing it down, envisioning it. At the end of the day, we are on a planet that's like, you know, it's just in rotation, just in the middle of nowhere. No one knows what it's really being held up by. You just called it something, but it's being held up. So that lets me know that like we are the masters of this little place and that anything is, is really possible if we're really floating. We ain't falling off nothing. Like that's really dope. That's really special. Do you speak about this stuff in your poems? Oh yeah. But not enough. Just mostly at the end of shows. Mm. Just to remind people to be good to each other and 
and speak things and truly become a magnet for positive things in your life. You know, because my friends are like that. <laughs> my neighborhood's really quiet, so it's just funny. It's cool though, I like it. So you write the songs, you write the music, like the melodies, and, and uh, you work on the music with Joshua. Uh -huh. And then you come with this simple plan. I'm just trying to envision this. And you come okay. with this simple plan. You're like, Joshua, I want to do this. And then Joshua sort of takes it home and, and works, at, works it out on his own. That's how I talk to him. I want to go B and go, uh, 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 Get it? A little bit. <laughs> and then he'll, but the craziest, most beautiful thing is what I have in my head for it will be something completely different, you know, that he go and I still be like, oh, okay, I like that too. And that's the uh, beauty of working with people. Sometimes it's, you know, in the beginning, sometimes it can be like hard, you know, that's not what I want. But what you have to think about sometimes is um, you're not working alone. It's, it's one, it's a ship. And if you guys want to go in one direction, you have to be on the same page. And it's not just your mind that's adding to things, you know. It's, it's other people's uh, visions and minds, you know, as well, that have input on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just have to respect that. And that's a learning experience in itself. Could you do one poem that you never set to music that's just a poem poem? The major that she majoring in don't make no money. But she would never drop out. Because I would look at my own damn self funny. Because um, there's no way that I am dropping out of school. You know, my whole family would look at me like I'm a joke. Even if I paint dreams constantly in my notebooks meant for my math notes, I'm supposed to be right here. I'm supposed to put down uh, the notebook and pick up the career. I'm supposed to put the dreams in the back seat and put my car in full gear, heading towards some beautiful, bright future. And all that starts here. It, it starts at college, the university of get off my damn couch and get a job. Need help? I got your base first. Let's put your dreams of... Of, uh, let's put your dreams of wanting uh, a, a future and put it, oh, I forgot it. Let's put your dreams of, ah, uh, I can't remember it. So used to doing stuff around music and I'm like, dang, which one should I do? Um, hmm. What comes first? What comes first? This morning, I woke up feeling impossible. Like there was a mountain inside of my chest. And I felt the rocks inside of my lungs and the concrete inside of my cardiac. I'm telling you, I feel big. I smell strong. For I am like a giant in the body of a lion. I am at the peak of my brilliance. I can feel the indecision in the wind swaying backwards and swaying forwards. It's thinking about knocking someone like me over. But I ain't never seen no breeze knock no mountain over. I'm telling you, I feel big. I am walking towards the moon with a double barrel rifle and a spear. I'm gonna slice the sun in half and call a half moon's bluff and I bet if I rip the center of the earth I will find the heart to be tough. Now ever since, ever since I was 12 years old there's been a tricycle riding up and down my spine with a busted brake and a crooked wheel. I need a realignment in my back so my soul can heal and most days I feel like oil, like a blessing with a leak. I wanna spill everywhere. I wanna leave a piece of God in your back seat. I wanna ride the the back of the devil until he buckles in his knees and I could feel him slowing down in our flight he must have forgot how to use the wings I'm feeling bright I'm feeling fast I'm speaking in light I can feel the impact of a crash in my very bones and most days I can't believe my legs because I didn't think that they would last me this long. I didn't think that my arms could reach this high or that my eyes could open this wide. I feel, I feel like vision, so I must be witnessing. <laughs>